Good evening, and welcome to the third concert in a live music series, a production of the Howland Chamber Music Circle in collaboration with the Chapel Restoration, Newburgh Chamber Music, and Pauling Concert Series, and our media partner, Classical WMHT-FM. Tonight you are in for a very unique program by a, an unusual and gifted pair of siblings, Colin and Eric Jacobson. Hailed by the New York Times as an interpretive dynamo, conductor and cellist Eric Jacobson has built a reputation for engaging audiences with innovative and collaborative programming. Eric serves as the conductor of the nights and music director for the Orlando Philharmonic Orchestra and the Greater Bridgeport Symphony. According to the Washington Post, violinist and composer Colin Jacobson is one of the most interesting figures on the musical scene. An eclectic composer who draws on a range of influences, he is also active as an Avery Fisher career grant winning soloist. Eric and Colin co-founded and are co-artistic directors of The Knights, an adventurous orchestra collective that is currently celebrating its 10th anniversary. The brothers were also founding members of Brooklyn Rider, hailed as one of the wonders of contemporary music by the Los Angeles Times. Both are also touring members of the famed Silk Road Ensemble. Tonight, Colin and Eric will be performing a varied program with music ranging from the 18th to the 21st century with an original composition by Colin Jacobson. I want to recognize you, our patrons, and the patrons of our co-sponsors for your vital support. We appreciate all of your donations, great and small, which are helping to support these artists and sustain our organizations. And now, words of welcome from the Chapel Restoration, Newburgh Chamber Music, and Pauling Concert Series. Enjoy the concert. Hi, I'm Stephen Hutchison with the Chapel Restoration in Cold Spring, New York. I'm very proud to say that we have collaborated once again with the Howland Chamber Music Circle out of Beacon, New York. This concert features the dynamic brotherhood, Colin Jacobson on violin and his brother, Eric Jacobson on cello. Their concert will also feature a very rarely heard Maurice Ravel Sonata. I love Ravel, this should be very beautiful. At this time, I can't think of any organization who hasn't been touched financially. The Chapel Restoration is one of those. This is a donation concert, so when it comes time to give your donation, please give. We're so appreciative of anything you can do to support us. Our motto here is, we are here because of you. I know you're going to enjoy this concert, and once again, thank you so much. Hello, I'm Carol Cowan, Artistic Director of Newburgh Chamber Music. We appreciate all the amazing work of the Howland Chamber Music Circle, especially Carl and Marjorie, in organizing this Alive Musica collaboration. I want to thank Newburgh Chamber Music's Deborah Dresser, Marianne McHenry, Karen Warner, and Annie McCurdy for their extra publicity and website work involved in presenting this streaming series. This is a great learning experience for all of us. We are so happy to be able to reach many people who may be housebound, who are unable to come to live events even when that is possible for our regular audience. We are glad to offer these concerts free with a suggested donation of $20. We hope that you will support the organization you are most involved with as generously as you can. Thank you and enjoy this concert. Hello and welcome everyone, both newcomers and longtime loyal supporters of Pauling Concert Series. Welcome to a production of Alive Musica. My name is Ned Reed. I'm president of the Pauling Concert Series. And with other Hudson Valley presenters, we are bringing these wonderful concerts to you this fall. They were recorded at the Howland Center with a wonderful group of technicians there, and we give them great thanks. We look forward to the day when you all will be back in your respective performance venues, seeing live music and enjoying it at that time. But for now, please enjoy this evening's production and performance. Thank you very much.
it's very nice to be in a room together. And I, I feel a little naked without my mask, all of you have it, but it also feels a little freeing and just a, a special thank you because uh, every moment that live music is starting to come back is just a very special one. So thanks for having us. And, um, we, we've been um, quarantined together with our families all in one house in Brooklyn. So we're, um, we're able to hug which means a lot. <laughs> and um, we've been working on various musical things throughout the last six months. One has been the Ravel duo, which is one of these great pieces, and maybe the great piece of the canon for violin and cello. So we've recorded it from our house in the last six months, and it's now, this will be our first time ever playing it, the whole thing, right? I think so. And uh, Colin's gonna start alone. Right, with a, a piece by Bieber, as I was saying to someone beforehand, not Justin. Um, this is Heinrich Ignaz von Bieber, um, the Baroque composer. And um, pre Bach wrote one of the first, I think, written down solo works for violin without continuo. And this is part of his rosary sonatas, which are um, each have a beautiful woodcut illustration and um, uh, illustrate a, a different part of, of, the, of the mystery sonatas or rosary sonatas. And uh, this one is a passacaglia in which four notes, these guys, get repeated over and over again with sort of written out improvisatory variations on top of them. And uh, I think it's very interesting that this passacaglia, um, which was such a, a, a thing that so many Baroque composers riffed on, um, countless passacaglias are written on this, this bass line. Uh, probably came from the Middle East. Um, it's a scale that is used throughout the world, uh, particularly in the Arabic world, but also forms the basis of a lot of flamenco music. And um, as, uh, our, as a, a hero of ours likes to talk about, Yo-Yo Ma likes to talk about how you look deep enough in a tradition and you actually find the world within it. So um, something I love about this piece by Bieber.
Well, um, as Eric mentioned, we've been um, spending a lot of time with Ravel's sonata for violin and cello that we'll play in a bit for you, but we've also been trying to dig up some other gems of the violin cello repertoire. So there's a piece by Gliere that we found, um, We Morceau, eight pieces, and we'd love to play three of, uh, of these beautiful pieces for you. There's a prelude, um, a gavotte, and then a berceuse.
some again? I guess so. So this is, um, I guess, Bieber is the pre-Bach virtuoso solo violin, and of course, many afterwards, but uh, we have to think about Paganini. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of the last six months for Eric and myself have been, and for many people, like, how do you keep forward motion going? And whether that's exercise, athletic pursuits, or music, um, we've been thinking about that. And Paganini is something I, I played um, probably the last time was 20 years ago in school. And it was something you had to do for your juries, your exams at Juilliard, um, or your entrance exam. And so it, was, it had this very etude aspect to it. But in the back of my head, I'm like, actually, these pieces are about invention, fantasy, uh, singing, extending one's uh, self on what you can do on the violin. And, and I loved them, but I never got to own them as, a, as adults, the Paganini Caprices. And then a friend of mine, John Higginbotham, a wonderful choreographer uh, who has a company, Dance Higginbotham, said that uh, he had a commission from Guggenheim's Works in Process to do something. And he thought um, during this time, during the last few months, and rather than create something just for that event, that Zoom event that they were gonna have, he wanted a project that would start now and, and have a forward-looking trajectory to the next few years. So he is choreographing all 24 Caprices from isolation in this moment, but um, going forward, we will be doing roughly one a month over the next few years. So we've done four so far, and two of those are, you know, you can see what, what happened. And I'm going to play you the first Caprice, which is where we started. And for this uh, video, what he had was a dancer, one of his dancers became obsessed with uh, jump, jumping rope during this time and joined a club, an online <laughs> rope jumping club. And so he worked with her to choreograph her rope jumping. And I think there's a wonderful, I, I always love working with dancers when I feel gesturally connected to what they're doing. And I think if you see the video, um, you'll, or even just listening to this right now, you might have in your mind that motion. to say the cellists leave the Paganini and the jump roping to the violinists. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got your own stuff. Yeah, we got Choppers. Yeah. Romberg. My teacher, I was 
when I was at Juilliard, my teacher was 90 and I was 18. I had this very special relationship. I had like a meal every day with him, a lesson every day. And um, he would tell the stories. And one of the stories he liked to joke about is the cello teacher at Yale, who also taught at Juilliard, um, Aldo Pariso. He was also one of these legend teachers. And my teacher's name was Harvey Shapiro. And Harvey said, oh yeah. Aldo calls me the Adagio cellist because he played beautifully slow, but Paganini. <laughs> right. Lydia? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, so this is a piece Colin wrote for the two of us maybe 10 years ago now. At least. At least. More. And uh, we just love playing it. It's just a little. It's short and Adagio. It's short and Adagio. And now for some Ravel, um, four movements of this piece that he wrote uh, literally basically a hundred years ago in memory of, of his colleague, um, Debussy, who had passed away not long before. And it should be noted that, I mean, this was written just at the tail end of the last great pandemic of the Spanish flu um, incident uh, about a hundred years ago. And I think there's something about the language of this, the way he uses the violin and cello. He, he talked about stripping things down to their really essence. And um, I think more than any other piece in Ravel's music, he hints at harmonies rather than spelling them out for you. And he also, from the very beginning, sa says to you, this is not minor or major with the opening figure in the, in the violin. So uh, four movement sonata by Ravel for violin and cello.
Thank you.